Hi guys, Dave Wilson here again. Now if you need to bend metal you can either use psychokinesis which I'm not going to show you or a simpler method is a Pepe Tools superior ring bender which I am going to show you. Follow me. So this is the Pepe Tools superior ring bending tool and the first thing that I should apologise for is that this is a little bit dirty and there's a good reason for that. This is my own working tool and I do use it. I'm not one of those people who makes reviews on a tool that I've never actually used. So before I review something I thoroughly test every single part of it and put it through its paces. So this one's been put through its paces and so forgive me if it looks a little dirty but this is a genuine working tool. Another thing I'll say is that when you first receive it, you may find that it's covered in a thick sticky brown grease. That's to stop it rusting in transit. Now you can clean it off with white spirit and a cloth if you wish, but if you do that, make sure that you coat it again with some kind of oil. Something like WD-40 spray oil, because these components are steel and if you don't look after them they will rust. So make sure you use some kind of oil to lubricate and protect it. So this is the superior ring bending tool and this is the new upgraded version of the super ring bending tool that you might be familiar with and it comes with all the components that you need to get ready and working. Now if you pick it up the first thing you'll notice is the immense weight of it. It really is solid and heavy and if you look at the side here you can see the thickness and that is solid steel. So it really is incredibly well built. So it comes with everything you need and um, we've got the main unit itself which is the bender complete with handle. You've got this small piece here which is for attaching to a vise and I'll show you that in a moment but you can see how thick and solid it is. And the set also comes with seven different mandrels and what we have here is you have round posts all on a 24mm base and you can see we've got 12, 14, 16, 20 and 22mm poles and each one comes with a matching die of the same size. So you can see we've got five circular ones and we also have a square one here which is 90 degrees and again a matching mandrel for it. And we have a diamond shaped one at 60 degrees and again a matching mandrel for that. And the whole thing sits on this powder coated aluminium base for storage and organisation. The unit needs to be firmly screwed down to your bench. The simplest way is to use these four holes here and attach screws directly into your workbench. Make sure that they're countersunk and that they don't interfere with the operation of the bender. If you don't want to make holes in your bench, you can screw it to a plank of wood like this, again using the four screw holes provided. And then in turn, you can fasten the plank down to your bench using G-clamps. So nice and simple and you don't destroy your bench that way. If you have a bench vise, another solution is to use this mounting block that comes in the kit. Just flip the bender over and you'll see there's two screw holes. Attach it firmly with the bolts provided. Make sure that the corners are the right way around. You'll notice two of the corners are slightly smaller. Screw it in firmly and then pop that into your bench vise. Now if you mount the plate horizontally you'll find that that should be perfectly okay but I've got an added feature on my vise here that I can swivel it round on the base so that gives me an extra level of adjustment for comfort. To insert the posts and dies, simplicity itself, choose the post that you want and just pop it into the hole there and that will sit there quite happily. Choose the die that you want and due to the round stud at the back they slot in very simply either way around it doesn't matter just pop it in there simple as that. Now here I've got a piece of sterling silver burrow wire with a little step on it and I'm going to pop this in. Now notice that I'm pushing the end past the die that's quite important make sure that it's level and straight and then pull the handle and put your first bend in. You notice I didn't start right at the very end of the silver it's often easier to start in the middle and then once you get a curve going you can work your way around to the edge and do the end bit. 
So keep going, rotating it round, pulling the handle and putting little bends in, small and often. Don't try to force things and don't use too much pressure. Just keep working your way around until you get right bound round to the beginning. Very important, watch that it doesn't overlap. You don't want to start squeezing the end into the bit where you've started because uh, that could leave a mark. So once you're happy with it, cut it, saw it, solder it. And this, for example, could be a coin mount for a pendant or something like that. Now, I want to just explain to you how it works. And if I take the handle off, you can see where it pivots here. But notice that the pivot isn't in the centre of the handle. It's slightly off centre. So what that means is, as you rotate the handle, rather than rotating on the centre, it actually moves from side to side. I don't know if you can see that there. And so as you pull the handle, it moves sideways and pushes the piston in and out, which in turn moves the die towards the post. So hopefully you understand how that works. And what this means is that you get an incredible amount of leverage. So it's important don't be too heavy handed with it because it is very powerful. Just show you some of the other dies here. Uh, this is a 20 mil and I'm bending a piece of wavy wire here. You don't have to use flat strip, you can use anything. Um, this could be uh, the start of a ring, for example, something like that. Here I've got a piece of sterling silver strip, and I've put two marks on it. So this could be the inside of a little box, for example. And in this case, I've got the 90 degree post and die. So once again, line my mark up with the edge of the post, apply pressure and that will put a perfect 90 degree bend in and then once again moving it round and bending another part and this could be the sort of a little box or something like that now you might be wondering why you would need a 60 degree handle well you probably don't but this is great for where you need to fold a piece of metal over on itself and this gives you a great start so for example you could be producing the tongue for the inside of a box clasp or something like that so again put a mark on it where you want it line it up apply the pressure and this will give you a perfect parallel straight bend so from there you can then bend it flat uh, and like i said this could be the start of a, a box clasp or something like that and finally this is a piece of triangular wire and this is on the smaller 12 mil round mandrel and again, as long as you don't use excessive force, that's fine. What I'm doing here is, you notice I'm using the vise to hold the piece and I'm pushing it with my thumb. So that way I avoid applying too much pressure onto the actual silver itself and potentially damaging the finish. So there you go, snip that, solder it, and that could be a nice three-dimensional ring for example. So there you have it. As always, Pepe are constantly improving their tools. They're listening to feedback from jewellers, people like myself. So we've got hardened dies now. We've got the edges rounded. We've got the round studs on the back for faster interchange. We've got the sizes engraved on the top. They're hardened and toughened. The whole thing is just improvement after improvement after improvement. And let's be honest, the first one was great. So I hope you found this useful. Once again, I do have to give you a word of warning. Make sure that you get genuine Pepe tools. There are fakes and counterfeits and copies and replicas out there on the market. Some of them I've seen have got very, very loose fittings. Um, some have got very sharp edges. They don't, they're not finished to the same quality. So find a reputable dealer and make sure you get genuine Pepe tools from the USA. You are going to get great value, the best quality you can get, and you are going to get guaranteed perfect results every time. Don't gamble with your safety, guys. Stay safe, have fun, and I'll see you next time. I've been Dave Wilson. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.